Good morning to you. Mark Set of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Tuesday, the 26th day of September 2017. I am in Rodanthe, North Carolina. That is out here along the North Carolina Outer Banks. I'll show you in a moment a close-up of where I am. And I am here for the effects, the impacts of Maria. Uh, and if we look at the headline from the National Hurricane Center for Maria, Tropical Storm Force Winds, nearing the North Carolina Outer Banks, and I can verify that, as can a lot of other people. There's a lot of weather stations out here, but um, I've got one set up on the third landing, um, whatever you want to call it, like the balcony up here at a friend of mine's house, and it's about 35 feet or so above the ground with terrific exposure, nothing blocking it as far as you can see and I just had a wind gust to 35 miles per hour and that uh, information of course is going into our app which I'll talk about at the end here in just a minute but the bottom line is yes tropical storm conditions are approaching the outer banks you can see here that the pressure continues to come up just a little bit but it's not this rapid rise again Maria is slowly sort of winding itself down and has been spreading out from this very intense, powerful hurricane that ravaged the Caribbean, including, of course, Puerto Rico, and before that, of course, Dominica. And now it's this very large wind generator and wave generator, and uh, the winds in the across the hurricane in some portions of it at 75 miles per hour. Now, that... Uh, is going to translate into some serious conditions here along the Outer Banks in terms of impact. And that's what we've been talking about uh, for the better part of the week here in the last several days is that Maria wouldn't just turn out to sea with no harm, no foul, that it would bring some impacts up here, I did believe, uh, and maybe make landfall. That's not going to happen, but the impacts certainly will. So just a couple of things to note here. It's still moving north, so 360 degrees, 7 miles per hour. And you see the longitude is 73.1. My longitude is about 75.3 or so. And so this is going to be a little over 130 miles uh, to my east if it reached my latitude, which is about 35.3 two or something like that. Um, so the center is going to be well off the coast of North Carolina by over 100 miles, between 120 and 150 miles. But if we scroll down here uh, and you look in the um, discussion in 48-hour outlook, and by the way, this is where you always find this information, and that is right here. And the hurricane force winds now extend outward to 105 miles from the center. That's incredible. See, I told you this was going to happen. It's going to just kind of spread out and take that energy that was once concentrated near an eye wall that was absolutely lethal and just violent down in the Caribbean and take that energy and move it out over a much larger area. And as such, the ocean has become energized and I'm going to set up a camera here in just a little while in Rodanthe and then several more down here and I'm going to show you what this looks like you know and I mean it's not that unusual out here don't get me wrong I don't want to make it sound like that this is the most incredible thing that's ever happened but it is a problem for the people down here they have asked the visitors to leave so it's already impacting the economy businesses are closed and there will be damage from this system and so to me it's fascinating to see what's happening as we note here in this paragraph you look at this and you say okay the hurricane force winds 105 from the center and tropical storm force winds 240 miles out so you have this enormous wind machine and I cannot emphasize that enough and so what it is going to do it is going to create obviously tropical storm conditions with the wind and that'll create a little bit of damage here and there maybe some scattered power outages but then we're looking at the possibility of two to four feet 
of either sound side or ocean side flooding above normally dry ground up to about two to four feet and the rainfall minimal and really no uh, no threat at all of any tornadic or downburst activity from this so it's going to be a wind and a surge machine for this area and then obviously up and down the coast including all the way out to Bermuda the Turks the Caicos and the Bahamas um, and the rest of the United States East Coast just depending on the location and the direction to the ocean that that area faces the possibility of some pretty high uh, swells coming in and again I mentioned often that the surfers really enjoy that but you have to be very careful out there seriously so let's look at the three-day map I want to be able to kind of zoom in here and show you look at that giant wind field of tropical storm force winds hurricane force winds extend out a large area too but they are mostly to the east of that center of circulation which is way out here but now the edge of the tropical storm force winds getting a little bit closer to the North Carolina Outer Banks and you can just kind of follow the circle here and you can imagine the winds are coming out here from the northeast and then <clears throat> as you come around uh, north northeast finally north and then eventually they're going to be northwest and so as Maria comes up a little farther to the north and then turns these winds are eventually going to veer out of the northwest and push the Pamlico Sound uh, towards the sound side of the Outer Banks and that could be very problematic as we have seen in hurricanes uh, of the recent past you know two feet of ocean water or sound water brackish water from the Pamlico Sound four feet of it if it comes in that's not very pleasant that's for sure is it gonna wash people away well no as long as they use common sense I guess so looking at the um, satellite picture you can see very limited convective activity that's right in here <clears throat> and that's where the hurricane force winds are gonna be well offshore but this giant circulation pattern like I said I don't want you to think about this let's put it in a different perspective now a lot of people know this already who live out here and they can certainly appreciate it but for those of you that don't understand the magnitude of this you have this tropical storm force wind field that is blowing the ocean all the way over here towards the land and what we call the fetch it's a very long fetch of wind racing across the ocean translating that energy into the ocean's surface and building the seas in some cases in excess of 25 feet and all of that energy is headed where it's all headed towards the coast over here and even up here along the tidewater of Virginia and onshore flow up here towards New Jersey elevated sea state overall erosion of the dune system beach overwash dune overwash roads in some cases not washed out hopefully but covered in sand and some water and then this is going to set up for a very vulnerable nor'easter season not to say that we won't have another hurricane threat but I think that's going to start to diminish especially with the cold wake that we have created through here by Jose and Maria but you get these powerful nor'easters that come up the coast during the winter time and you've got this vulnerable coast this is what I'm talking about all this weather it does matter it all adds up and just because it's not a news grabbing category three or a four and you got all these reporters from all the different networks lined up on the beach to get their career started like Dan Rather and Hurricane Carla I think it was uh, doesn't mean that it's an impactful that it's not an impactful event because it is all right so let me climb off that soapbox real fast I just pointing it out all right there is a tiny little hurricane Hurricane Lee very well defined very small area of energy and this is a great example tiny bundle of energy large bundle of energy this one is much stronger overall than this one but this one's got more energy translating into the ocean and you know having these next to each other really helps to illustrate that point that you could fit almost the entire circulation of Lee 
in the hurricane force wind area of Maria. That's incredible. You got to admit. All right. So if you go to weather.gov, let me just back out and this is their homepage, weather.gov. <clears throat> you can either put in your zip code or you can put in your town's name or you can just click on the map if you generally know where you're interested in. And so you click on Eastern North Carolina over here. You get this nice zoomed in map with all these different headlines. And what I want to do is I want to look at the storm surge watch information and just kind of read a couple of these to you. Now these are issued, in fact this is fairly recent, 9.03 a.m. So this is coming out of the National Weather Service office in Newport, Moorhead City. So in this particular statement, they are specifically talking about Ocracoke, all right, the island of Ocracoke. That's over in Hyde County, and that's a beautiful area, by the way. So Ocracoke, you want to know, either you live there, which you probably already know what you need to know, hopefully, or you have interest there. You're in Ohio, or you're up in the northeast, or wherever. You say, you know what, I love Ocracoke. What's the deal? What's going to happen down there? Well, it talks about the wind, and it talks about the threat level, which is elevated. That's not too bad. The impacts are unfolding right now. And, you know, there's the possibility of up to 57 mile per hour wind gusts. So it gives you all this information, and it also includes the info about storm surge, that a life-threatening surge is possible, two to four feet, above ground somewhere within the surge prone area and that'll be a window of concern going from now through early thursday morning and the threat to life and property is moderate and there's really not that much uh, change from the previous assessment and they're looking for uh, flooding of greater possibly greater than three feet above ground and they talk about how this is unfolding I and mean, it's happening right now, from now until Thursday morning. And so this goes on and on and on. You can scroll down. You can find one for areas that are away from the immediate coast. All right. And so you see Bayboro and Arapaho and what do you call that? Hobucken, I guess. And um, you would think I'd know that being from North Carolina. And then again, it talks about the winds and they're a little bit less because it's a little bit farther inland. And then there is some storm surge potential, but here it's a little lower. All right? So this is a great piece of information that you can access, and it goes all the way to New Bern, Havelock, Vanceboro. These are areas along the Noose River, and the surge there is expected to be maybe two to four feet in some areas, and the threat to life and property here also moderate. And so you can read all of this yourself, uh, and it goes on and on and on. Very good information, solid information from the people at the Weather Service office, the WFO over here in the Newport, Moorhead City area. And likewise, just real quick, the Hurricane Local Statement is a similar product that gives you information on what to expect for your area. And all of this is located at the National Weather Service site. You can either put in the zip code for your area that you're interested in, or you can type in the name of the city, and there you go. All right? So I'm going to be out here for the next couple of days. After I wrap this video discussion, I'm going to go and set up a camera over, you can hear the wind outside, over near the dune system. And I'm going to show you as this overwash takes place. The camera is designed to run for... 32, 33 hours. So if I set it up here in the next hour or so, then it should run for the rest of today and then all day Wednesday into Wednesday evening and then the batteries will run out and it'll have run to its designed time frame. The video feeds, of course, into our app, Hurricane Impact. That's what it's designed for. And I'm going to post the link once in a while on Twitter so that folks can watch it outside the app, but I'm really trying to put all of our products into the business side of what we do because this is my job, okay? This is what I this is how I try to earn an income and when there are hurricanes, I need to be able to do that so that I can t continue this for future work. You know, this is not a hobby. 
uh, of mine. This is my career. This is what I've done this for 20 something years. So, if you already have Hurricane Impact, now's the time to start checking it. The weather data is flowing into it right here from the the house that I'm recording this video in, and uh, and soon, in just the next hour, I'm going to have live video from this location as well. So it's on the App Store, it's at Google Play, Hurricane Impact, and um, of course, if you are a subscriber to our HurricaneTrack.com subscriber service, is what we call Insider, you get to go on the inside, right? Um, the live video will be in there on the web interface as well. Uh, but like I said, every once in a while, I'll post the links on Twitter. I don't want to have to force people to watch stuff via a paywall, but the app is a great way to keep up with it in a nice, convenient, aggregated package. And it's what it's designed for. All right? And so this will be the first camera, then I'll set up another one probably in Hatteras Village. The idea is I want to be able to capture some of the sound side flooding, if indeed it occurs. And then I'll pick a, a couple of other spots and if all goes well, I'll have four live feeds from the Outer Banks. Not bad for one dude all by himself. Uh, and one last thing, if you are following on Twitter, and of course if you're also using the app, all of our Twitter stuff goes into the app automatically. I will be posting video snippets uh, fairly frequently. Anything that I think is interesting, I'm going to post to Twitter. So if you're not following, now's a good time to do so. And if you are following... You know, set your alerts or whatever so you get a notification when I post something. And if you're using the app, remember, check the Twitter section in there. Hit the little refresh button, and any new stuff that I have posted, new content, will show up there. All right? Thanks for listening. I do appreciate it as always. Like I said, I'm here on the Outer Banks. It's time to get to work. I am Mark Sutherland for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video briefing for you uh, later tonight.